couple more quick um, things to take care of this morning. Um, I have one announcement that I don't like making. Um, our friend David went home with Jesus this week. And we have a picture of him up here, I think. There he is. Um, yeah. Um, amazing, amazing man, an amazing story of God's mercy and grace. I love this picture because um, he loved you guys. And after we gave him that picture, he, he would study it. And he would pick people out and talk about things. Um, he's, he, I remember uh, one morning I went in to see him and he said, there's people in the back and they're waving. Um, and so uh, he loved you guys very much. I want to thank you for loving him extremely well. And I am confident that he is with Jesus and he has a nice, wonderful bed. And he gets to eat ribeye steak whenever he wants. <laughs> yeah, and then the pie. Um, uh, Danny, are they, are they going to have a service? Do you know for him? Have we heard? They haven't decided? Okay. They haven't decided. I'm actually going to be um, at some point just kind of talk about David in my life and some of the things that I learned from him um, soon. So, and then we have another wonderful announcement. Jenny, would you come forward? And Caitlin, where are you? Caitlin, will you come forward? Yeah. Caitlin. She, oh, good. I thought you started your Christmas vacation earlier or something. <laughs> Um, Jenny's going to go on a missions trip, Come on. and Caitlin being our missions pastor is going to pray for her, but I just want to tell you, Jenny, as I was worshiping, I really sensed that the Lord was saying to you um, that this isn't just a normal mission trip like you've been on. This is There's some things that he set before you specifically that he wants you um, to really see what he's doing, yeah. that you are his hands and his feet and his eyes and his voice. And that it, um, he's going to use you in ways you never dreamed, and you're going to see things that um, you haven't seen before, and it is all going to be for his glory. And so just kind of be ready for that, and, um, and he's going to start doing a lot more of that in your life as well. So go and love on them, see them, touch them, and see what God does, okay? Amen? Okay. Okay, I'm going to have Jenny share a little bit about what she's doing. Yeah, so I had the opportunity to co-lead a mission trip from January 1st to the 12th. Um, we, it's through Bio, um, Bio University Student Missionary Union. Um, so we're, yeah, so going to Yucatan, Mexico, we are leading VBS school ministry, um, as well as teaching English and computer skills. Um, the, the community we're working in is very poor. And so through teaching these computer skills and English, we're enabling the kids to be able to get jobs for their family and then from there they can teach their kids and then just the legacy continues um and so yeah we're really excited Yay. Yay. Okay. Yay. Yay. okay let's pray god we thank you so much for jenny thank you for the call that you put on her life just a call to the poor a call to the nations a call to just go and love and Listen to your voice and be obedient to just chase after you and wow. build your kingdom. God, thank you for the way that you've created her to love. Thank you for the passion in her heart. And Lord, we just bless her. As she prepares for this trip, would you just prepare her heart, God? Prepare the hearts of everyone on that team, Lord. Would their hearts just be so knit with yours, Lord? Would their hearts just beat with the heart of the Father as they go in love? God, um... Yeah, just bless Jenny, bless her co-leader. Just give them everything, equip them for everything that they need to lead this trip. Just pray that you would give them wisdom and guidance. I pray that there would be such unity among the team members, Lord, that they would just go as a unit fighting for your kingdom together. Wow. Um, yeah, would they just go in power and in love in you, Lord Jesus. And yeah, let them just go with open hands for whatever you have for them. Thank you for the adventure of missions, that it never goes the way we expect, but that it's always an adventure, and it's good because it's from you. Yes. Yeah. So, God, yeah, let their hands just be open to whatever you want to do. 
their hearts open to just however your spirit leads. Just bless them, guide them, and just fill them with your love in Jesus' name. Patrick, thank you for having the foresight to bring this box up here. <laughs> Actually, I told the. Uh, I have to see her to remember her name. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I told somebody to bring me all the boxes this week. Uh, I am just so moved by so many things. And one of the things that I've been you would not believe how little I enjoyed this. I really don't. I'd like to be able to finish a sentence or two. Uh, <laughs> but I, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not able to do it. Um, but anyway, Marianne, I thought about you a lot this week. Pray. I can't comprehend the, the magnitude of your loss. Oh, so. <laughs> then today you're going to go pick up your grandchild from the airport. So this all is life. It <laughs> talk about the storms of life today. And <laughs> I'm going to attempt to. <laughs> and I'm glad that I've got other things to do uh, to may maybe get myself together a little bit. Um, I have some people sharing this morning that have some God stories. Uh, uh, Bob Sarami, where are you? Come here. Uh, Bob's been with us about six months or so. <laughs> that was so rude. Oh my god. Oh well, okay. Anyway, uh, he's a former vineyard pastor from New York, New York. And, uh, and so he's got a little bit of a story. I'm really afraid to give him a mic because he is a foreign pastor. Uh, but he's got a, a little story to tell us about a, a wonderful thing that God's doing. How much time do I have? <laughs> Not much. Okay. So I'm going to give you the backstory to a major blessing that just happened in my life. I would probably border on a miracle. Wow. Um, but I still can't grasp this thing that just happened. 85, in 1985, we, we started uh, the vineyard in Kingston, New York. It was a plant. Uh, pastor came out in 86. In 90, I was ordained. In 92, I was, became senior pastor of that church. There was a lot of warfare in that area, upstate New York, a lot of religion, traditionalism, and by 2000, I resigned, burnt out, depressed, in an institution, wow. on drugs, on the verge of suicide. Wow. The enemy was hounding me. And I just said to a cop, you got to check me in. What's going on? I don't want to commit suicide, but I can't stop thinking about it. And I ended up in a psychiatric ward. I resigned in June, and then we moved out here. We always wanted to come out here. We were here for pastor conferences and 
you know, all the West Coast, we loved it. So we said, let's go. We packed up our family, left our church family behind in New York, moved out here to Irvine, got our kids situated. And so I, first job I started selling cars. I absolutely hated it. Well, let me back up. So I grew up in the resort family, resort and catering and hospitality. In 1990, I left that to go into ministry. So I left all my inheritance and all my assets there, knowing I might never see them again. And two years ago, they were all gone, a quarter million dollars worth just lost, just squandered by the rest of my family. So I sold cars, I couldn't stand it. So I got back in the catering business. I started a restaurant, and in 05, I went bankrupt. I lost another quarter million dollars. I've been out of ministry since. I haven't really spoken up in front of a church since 2000. And so my wife's been bugging me. We're getting older, of course. What are we going to do for retirement? I said, I don't know. We just have to trust God. He brought us along this journey this far. And I think you'll find in your life, the journey is everything. Yeah. Just where you start and where you end up. The best way to get through it is to get God's eyes and ears on now, I spent a lot of time on the couch praying and just trying to rest in God and trying to get His peace because this world will war on you to the point where you'll end up depressed or, you know, sick, unhealthy. And until you can rest in God, at least you find a little sanctuary every day of peace. And that's the only thing that's carried me through. And some of my visions, I would think, somebody gave me a house on Newport Beach by the water. I said, that's silly. Why would somebody give me a house on Newport Beach? So, we've been in the house we've been renting. Oh, when I had the restaurant, I went bankrupt, I had to sell my house. So we've been renting ever since. So we've been in our house in Irvine for a little over seven, seven and a half years. And our owner called us and said, I want to meet me on Thursday. We had the meeting set up for four. The water heater went out, so she came early. She had to replace the water heater. So we're at the table with my landlord, my wife, and me. And my wife gets a phone call. She goes in the bedroom. And the landlord starts telling me she's going to sell the house. And we had that feeling. We kind of sense. So now we got to move. You know, where are we going to move? We can't afford you know, continue living here, we might have to move inland, we might have to go somewhere more affordable, especially if we want to retire. Now, my wife is a massage therapist, and she's been working for a very rich client in Newport Beach, and she does therapy, and their house manager quit, and they haven't been able to find a good replacement, someone that could cook for them. That they live on an island in Newport Beach. They have a second house right next to their house on that island with a boat dock. Come on. Touching the water. When my wife went in the bedroom, it was him calling, offering that house to us for free. We haven't taken that opportunity yet because she's still working through what's the the cost in her life to right. give to them to live right. in this house. Right. Right. Yeah. So those visions I had right. that I dismissed. Wow. Check it out. So it's just, I don't know if it's a miracle, but you know, when you journey through life, you don't know how God's going to bless you because as you go through the valley of shadow of death and you die, when you come to the other side, God blesses you. You've got to be willing to walk through that valley of shadow of death. Ginger, Diane, and Jenna. You know, a week ago, Sunday, we did the Lord's King's table. Lord, King table. I get them all mixed up, all the time. Anyway, and one of the ways that people what we're able to respond and help is by writing letters. And so uh, these two young ladies wrote letters and saw visions and have something to say. So I want them to share it with you. Come on. Come on. Now, 
And one of the really cool things about working in a body is that everyone gets to use their gifts. And um, Jenna over here wrote letters, Kyan actually did some art. And the day that we had the sign up for King's Table, Kyan pulled me by the hand, dragged me to the table because she couldn't wait to sign up to help. Mm -hmm. And um, knowing that she, we couldn't go that night, but knowing she was an artist, I said, do you want to make some art? And what did you say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell us a little bit about how you knew what to draw. Um, I would pray to God and ask him what to draw, and then he would answer me with a thought of something or a picture. Sure. And then I would draw it. And there was one that wasn't dry, so we still have it, so she brought it, so she can show you. <laughs> and you told me you drew a lot of flowers. Do you remember what you told me about the flowers? About God not seeing the part? Um, um, he doesn't think of us as like one part of a flower. He thinks of us as like the whole flower and all of our different parts. Yeah, good job. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> all right, and then Jenna, as soon as I heard about it, I knew she was gonna wanna write letters. <laughs> Jenna, if you've been around her, she's a little bit quiet, but if you've ever received any kind of written communication from her, it is, it is deep and meaningful. Um, and you wanna tell us a little bit about um, what you did? Well, I wasn't really sure what to write at first. All I had, I would just start each letter with dear friend, and then I would say, my name is Jenna and I'm 15 years old. But I wasn't really sure what to write after that. So I prayed and I would take each letter in front of me and God would just give me like emotions about that person. Wow, I could just, like, come on. So then I would write something. <laughs> do, you, do you remember one example? Each, she wrote 10 letters and each one was very different. It was specific for the person that she was praying for. Do you remember one of the things you wrote? Mm -hmm. One of the people I just got like a sense of loneliness. So I wrote a letter and I said that um, I would want to be their friend and that also that Jesus could be their friend and I told them about stuff. And then I would end each letter by saying that I was praying for the person. Yeah, 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 good for you. Um, I am going to try to work through the book of Jonah, and uh, I won't get very far this morning, uh, because I want to be able to pray for some of you, because you're going, you know, life has its own storms. And those are one, one, one thing. They're just, it's part of living in a fallen world, is that we, there are storms that we encounter, and we have to go through. And I think, actually, I think some of the songs that we sing are just ridiculous, because we're asking to go through storms, and we're asking to be purified, and you, you know how you purify something, get gold? You turn up the heat. I'm not singing that song. I'm banning that song. Don't do that song. It sounds so pretty, but it looks really ugly uh, when it's happening. Uh, so we have the things of living in a fallen world that we deal with. And then we have storms that are uh, caused by just being dumb. Uh, by acting inappropriately, by being aggressive and assertive and, and nasty towards somebody. Well, you know, you get back, you're going to reap what you sow. So if you're not kind, uh, people won't be kind to you. If you're indifferent and you, are, are, you cut people off, well, they'll cut you off. It just, it's just what happens in life. Um, and then there's the storm that the Lord sends. And that is one nasty storm. Because you are not going to get out of it. And when you're in the middle of it, the only thing you can do is cry out, Help! Help me, God! 
And so I'll read a couple quotes. Uh, uh, Every act of disobedience to God has a storm attached to it. So there's, there's, uh, there are things that happen naturally, but then there is just plain old disobedience. Yeah. Where God says, go this way, and we go that way. And I, I don't know what we're thinking. We're obviously not thinking. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're going to flee. We're going to run from His presence. We're going to uh, get away. There is no getting away. Um, and, and the Bible uh, does not say that every difficult is a result of sin, but it does teach that every sin brings difficulty. Yeah. I mean, sin contradicts God's nature. It contradicts God's plan. It contradicts God's purpose for you, your life and my life. So when we sin, there is a consequence of sin. We, we teach a lot about grace, and uh, we listen to a lot of teachings about grace, and we don't hear a lot of teachings about sin. Uh, it's not the most popular thing. Uh, it's not the way that we win friends and influence people. Uh, but God, God deals with sin, and He deals with it really strongly. And really, and actually, very harshly, um, but he doesn't want to. And so, the the story of Jonah is an incredible story because God is sending his prophet. God is speaking to his prophet and telling them to go and tell that city to repent because their sins have come up to before him, and they're going to be toast if they don't repent. Right. And and shorthand cliff notes here Jonah doesn't want them to repent right. Jonah wants them to get what they deserve and that's the reason I picked this book and have been reading it constantly for the last three weeks is because I'm trying to see this what why would the prophet of God hear from God and say no, God. He must not fully understand who God is. You don't say no to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And there's nowhere to flee from His presence. Because if you go down to hell, He's there. If you go to the highest heavens, He's there. And He's everywhere in between. You can't run from God. You know, there was, there was a play uh, called Your Arms Are Too Short to Bought box with God um, you know, it's just not a good idea uh, but evidently uh, Jonah thought he could get away with it so the Lord spoke to him and told him go preach against the city of Nineveh because this wickedness has come up before me it's, he's not going to, to Nineveh to say hey God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life and uh, and just just be nice and you'll be okay. No, he's saying you got you got to stop this nonsense, stop this wickedness. They were a very 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 wicked people. Uh, we don't even have a city that we would know of that would be a parallel. It, but it, something like you know, go and to Las Vegas and just start walking up and down the streets and preach against it and warn them that there is judgment coming and their their bright lights are going to turn to really, really bright lights with the fire that comes from heaven. Um, and none of us none of us want to do that. And, and we do try to do things like that. We've got Huntington Beach where I used to live. There's people that stand out there with signs that tell and all the gays are going to hell, and tell people they're going to hell, and, and they're not very kind. I, I don't think that I don't think you can be the bad news and preach the good news. But you can't have you can't have a, you can't believe that God would be merciful to you and forgive you for all your sin 
They're not leaving because they're convicted. They're leaving. <laughs> they're leaving because they have an appointment at the airport. So uh, didn't want any to judge them. <laughs> um, but the fact is, we all have a little bit of Jonah's attitude in our heart. We have people that are are very nasty and very vile and very evil and they practice it regularly in our society and we see it and we want them to get judged we want them to get what they deserve and God's and God is saying I don't want to give them what they deserve I I want to give them what I I have I, I have mercy for them I have compassion for them he, he in this in Jonah he says there's 120,000 people in that city that don't know their right hand from their left. He felt compassion for them, but he couldn't ignore their sin, and he wouldn't ignore their sin. So he sends his, his prophet Jonah, and Jonah says, no, I'm not going. And it's just an incredible story. You should read through it again and again. But Jonah... It said in verse 3, But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish and went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish. Now Tarshish was in the opposite direction of Nineveh. So, and I said this last week, and I think it's worth saying again. If you want to run for, from God, there will always be a ship in port mm. waiting to take you to Tarshish, yep. ready, to, ready to take you to Nineveh That's a good in word. the opposite That's direction. Good. He'll, he'll pro the, the enemy will provide passage for you. Mm. And, he'll, and, he'll, and he'll convince you that it's safe passage. <laughs> you know, so you, you take it, the, you pay the fare and you get on board. And then what's it say? The Lord sent a storm. It wasn't a normal storm. These these were men of the sea, and they were terrified. And they and and these were what we would call godless men. And yet, when the storm came, they cried out to God, their God. And and then they then they found Jonah sleeping in the hull of the boat, and, he's, and they said, "Wake up!" Cry out to your God. Maybe He'll save us. And so, so uh, then they they cast lots to find out who was who was causing this problem. And it fell to Jonah. Jonah. And they said, "Well, who do you work for?" He goes, "Well, him." And he's like, "You've got to be kidding me!" And go, "Well, cry out to him. He might save us." And because they all of a sudden they found some faith. They may not have had any confidence anymore in their God, but they had confidence in Jonah's God that he might save them. And you know what was really incredible? Right. Read this story. Read it again and again. They were reluctant to throw him overboard. He said, throw me into the sea and your problems will be over. They didn't want to. They were more compassionate than the prophet of God. Yeah. He was willing that they would all perish. But, but God, God's heart for those people, those, those men on that boat, was to save them. He, they, he sent Jonah with a, a, message of his, a message of judgment, which is a message of compassion. If you're going to be running off a cliff and you, you yell to a person to stop, don't go that way, that's compassionate. That's kind. That's loving. Uh, Romans 18 uh, says, if you see your brother in sin, go to him. And you know, there are times we don't. We don't. We'd rather talk about the, them being in sin and tell everybody else that they're in sin. But we don't want to go to them because we know God. We know God will forgive them. You know, we know God will bring them to a place of repentance. That's what Jonah knew. He was so mad at God because he goes, I know what you're like and you're going to forgive these people if they repent. 
Yes, he is. Check it out. Yes, he is. Any man or woman that bows her knee at the name of Jesus and confesses with a, their heart and the tongue that Jesus is Lord, guess what? They get a clean slate. And you may be sitting right next to him in heaven. God wants us to have the same heart for those people that He has. And that's why it's important that we see them. See, Jonah separated himself, and the Jews did this a lot, and they had to rebuke, be rebuked for it. They saw themselves as more special than other people because God chose them. And the God comes in like, I think, Deuteronomy 7, He goes, you're not... I didn't pick you because you're great and the largest and the strongest people in the land. I picked you because you were weak and insignificant. And I could show my glory and I could show my strength and I could show my power through you. Knuckleheads? It says knuckleheads in the Hebrew. <laughs> Most people don't have the nerve to say it. But it's like... You're, you are who you are because I called you. Yeah. I called you and I've given you my gifts and I've given you my anointing. I've given you my word. And it's not so you could cluster away in a little huddle, holy huddle, and, and, and curse the rest of the world. Right. He's, we're not gathered here. You know, so that we can you know, get all psyched up and and get protected from the evil people out there. No, we're here to get filled with the Spirit and then walk out in this place in the power of the Holy Spirit and encounter people. And people encounter us and they encounter God through us. And much of it, you don't even have to say anything. You just, in a world that's nasty, in a world that's out for its own, in a world that isn't caring and kind, if you're caring and kind, and you don't repay evil for evil, you stand out. You stand out. If you are allow yourself to be taken advantage of, although you have rights, you'll stand out. Because you know what? Everybody around us calls for and demands their rights. That's right. That's what I said. Right. Right. <laughs> um, people demand their rights. But what if we say, it's okay. I'll turn the other cheek. I'll give this coat to you even though I don't have another. What if we act like Jesus acts? It really will get people's attention. And they will ask us questions. And then what we're supposed to do is be ready to give them an answer. Not a theological, doctrinal answer. We need to tell them our story. I was a mess. I was on my way to hell. Not, not two miles from here. Growing up on Edinger and Harbor. He met me there as a little boy and he interrupted my life because my life was not going to end up in a good place. It was not going to be, end up, would not be living. So God, I have a son who's in big trouble right now and he's going to prison and uh, I have to go up there on the 17th for his sentencing and uh, and we've been talking, and I just said, Son, you're very, very fortunate. God has interrupted you. You are, have been on a dark path, walking the wrong direction, and the end is destruction. But God loves you so much, and is so concerned about you, that he's willing for you to be locked up. And 
So I I send books and I talk to him and stuff, but I said, man, read the scripture, man. It will be life to you. It will give you hope. He is your refuge. Daddy can't help you. Daddy wants to help you. Daddy was rich enough to help you. <laughs> because I'm that codependent. <laughs> and that much of an enabler. <laughs> Uh, I would I would do anything, but God's not allowing me to. He's allowing me to to get on my knees, and call out to Him, and I have great confidence that God will meet Him there. Yeah. I have great confidence that God will meet Him. So, um, so Jonah. Speaks to all of us. Speaks to all of us have some of Jonah in us. Some of us have some points of disobedience, and the Lord needs to bring. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a surprise. Uh, uh, even me. I know that's shocking. Um, wow. And and the whom the Lord loves, He disciplines. You know, I'll end with this. Uh, I Aaron might come up. Um, I've lived 52 years knowing the Lord, and in that process I've had, you know, a lot of great favor in my life, and, and He's done all kinds of wonderful things, and, but in the midst of it, I kind of became duplicit, duplicitous. I, I, dis, I, I, I had a persona that I developed within the church. It wasn't like I figured it out, I was trying to. It's just me adjusting to my environment. Because the church does not promote honesty among its members. That may be a surprise to you. Don't be surprised. So I learned how to play the game. And I did it well. And then, and, and the Lord tried to interrupt me and I tried to, you know, tell myself and and then the Lord said, "Okay, we've gone far enough here. Let me just let me just pull the rug right out from my feet." And, and on that rug was my ministry. It was my children. It was my wife. It was my friends. They were all gone. But Jesus was there and met me there. And has been transforming me. And making me a, a person who's integrated with His Spirit. So I'm not one thing one place and one thing another. I'm just, I'm God's boy. Yeah, yeah, come on. And that's my life story now. I used to be known as a worship leader and a conference speaker and all that stuff. Now I'm just an old man that was a broken little boy and grew up and be, I was a broken man. But God broke me. Because He loves me. Whom the Lord loves, He disciplines. And the Proverbs 12 one says a great thing. It says, and he who hates discipline is stupid. <laughs> that's not. That's not. That's what it just says. I thought, well, I've been. I've been stupid, and I try not to be stupid now. When the Lord visits me and corrects me and, and tells me I'm a little bit off, uh, I, I know it's His love and His kindness. And so uh, we're gonna sing the song. And I just want you to remain seated. And then as you identify with the words of the song, uh, you stand and I'll pray for you, okay? I was sure by now, God, you would come down. Wipe my tears away Step in and save the day But once again 
I say it well, it's still raining As the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain
it's a man-made storm or the storms of life, God is there and He's with you. And there are people I know that you're fighting. You're fighting, Diane, you're fighting. You're always so positive, so full of faith. Steve and Patricia, I know what you're going through. But you're not alone. And with, with, with the storm comes the blessing in the middle of it. Your, your wonderful granddaughter that brings light. You know, this Tuesday I spent with uh, Abby and Willow and, and uh, Harrison. So, you know, you've got hell over here and you've got heaven on earth right here. You have them both. And so you don't lose faith. You, you trust God in the midst of it all. And if it's going good, great. Good for you. Yes. Praise God. But if you, you know, you're fighting it, Aaron, I know he's fighting it. But he's showing up. And he's doing what he does and what he's been given to do in faith. And so God will meet you. I totally trust that believe that so I'm just gonna pray a prayer over you and then oh I need to correct one of the announcements um, there was an announcement about the reckless mercy thing and it being kind of a trial run and me wanting your honest feedback I didn't say anything I did not say I want their honest feedback so forget that <laughs> yeah, no come and be prepared to lie <laughs> I'll feel much better. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. <laughs> and Lord, bless my family here. Bless them. Lord, we, we embrace your goodness and your joy and your happiness. We enjoy we embrace the pain. Lord, we embrace the suffering. Because in that way I identify with you. You suffered on the cross for our sake. So Lord, we, we take it all. Every end of the spectrum. All the good and all the bad. Because we know in the end, you're Lord in all and over all. So Lord, we trust you. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And we're going to try to remember to bring... Christmas donuts next Sunday. So, yeah. don't eat breakfast.